Welcome to 1407 Gray Malkin Lane. This is the living memory of the X-Men. Don't let anyone tell you different. Okay, so this is a review of Marauders number six, which is a Judgment Day tie-in, but it's in a very... It's doing it in a very interesting way. Um, They brought somebody back. Actually, before we get to that, there's a little piece that happened. Okay, so in the beginning of the book, we see um, some more of the cr Crimson Brimstone's uh, followers who are still doing his work. And then we see them being spied on by none other than our favorite purple dragon, and not Barney, Lockheed. And, but... Lo and behold, he doesn't know that he's being watched as well. And if you don't know who that is, man, the rat trap. Oh God, I get. I haven't seen him in years. Well, no, not rat trap. What? Oh my God, I know his name. It, it's on the tip of my tongue. He was one of a. He was part of Apocalypse's Dark Riders. Um, dirt nap. Dirt nap. That's what it. I swear. I, it was. Name is Dirt Nap. And um, yeah, uh, last time I saw him was back in. Larry Hama's run of Generation X back in 99. It was 1999. And um, yeah, he he's a very interesting type. A mutant rat. I wish we would have gotten more with him. But it seems like he's he's back and he's hunting. Okay, so uh, they bring... Alright, so back to the main story. We get... Uh, they bring back Birdie. Uh, Saber tubes, uh, empath. Saber tube. I, I don't. I never. All right. I mean, Birdie had just had been dead by the time I got into. I I know of her, but I just don't really understand how her powers work. Like the way, like she's a telepath, but she was able to give. Uh, Saber tube, empathy, the glow, like, become more human. And she's taking the role as more of a therapist. And I think that's really, that's very cool. Like, Steve Orlando, he has a deep, uh, he has a deep love for uh, uh, just a, a really deep love for these characters. And he knows, and he knows his characters. I, I totally respect that. Uh, first, we get, so, um, They've apparently they've all been judged by the celestial, the eternal celestial, and we get some answers that you know a few was we wondering, uh, like with Bishop, Malcolm, and Randall. I it'd have been nice to have seen Shard, but you know, uh, we get his reason. We get go through Aurora. We go through Tempo. We go through Psylocke, Quanon. We go through uh, uh, Salmonus. I just call him Carl. Then we go through Akiro. Then we go through. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's really cool. I really like it. I really like it. Uh, they deal with all their issues, it's like big questions that there nobody's answering. And now we've also seen the debut of another petal of Orcus. This dude, his name is Judas Traveler. <sighs> I wonder how that's gonna work out. I love I love issues that have more character development. You don't need all that action. It, and this reminded me of uh, X Factor. A couple of, okay, Marauders to me is now 
kind of like the X fact. Like it reminds me of like early Peter David stuff. Like it's kind of all over the place. They're not really in with the continuity with the with the big stuff, but it's still good on its own. I'm I'm digging it. Like, but this issue reminded me of uh, X Factor twelve, it, which also reminds me of X Factor ninety four. Like any issue where like they deal with a therapist, that's where I go. So, I'm giving this book a, I'm giving this book a three point, now nah, a four, a solid four, four point, uh, four point oh uh, out of five stars. I like it. I'm digging the story. It's picking up. It's really picking up. I and I want to see what's going to get, what's going to happen with everything. They got three different, uh, got two different subplots going on, and and they made and they made the Judgment Day stuff really work for them. I'm digging it. Okay, well, this is fourteen oh seven Great Malkin Lane. Signing out.